Time now is 742 and you can say goodbye to those antibacterial soaps. Here with more is Fox Size medical expert Dr. Chef Fu joining us this morning and OK, so we're just talking no antibacterial soap altogether. Stick with just plain water and soap. Right. It sounds interesting, Abby. The issue has been, of course, that um, a lot of companies have had the opportunity in soaps and some of the body washes to use the term antibacterial because of the addition of certain chemicals. The FDA recently ruled, actually last week, that they can no longer utilize those chemicals and they can't advertise them as being antibacterial because the truth is that the chemicals that have been used for many years in some of these soaps and some of these body washes have not really borne the test of time. They've not shown that they really do have an antibacterial effect. And in fact, some of these chemicals may be harmful. So the FDA has ruled that companies will need to remove these chemicals, some now and some there's a moratorium for about a year. One of those uh, chemicals uh, actually is shown to kill the kill bacteria by, by destroying the cell walls. However, it actually takes several hours to do that, which is, of course, much longer than one would normally wash oneself. So they've been removed and taken off the market. The concern was, uh, Abby, that there were some animal studies that seemed to indicate that some of these chemicals could be injurious and in that the animal studies demonstrated that prolonged use could affect the uh, use of uh, the effect of hormones in the body. So oh. they've been removed and taken off. And, and actually, most of the studies now we know in medicine have shown that simple washing with uh, running water and, and soap seems to be the most effective way at preventing d disease or transmission of disease, much more effective than some of these antibacterial soaps. Now, it's important for consumers to note that really the hand washers and the hand sanitizers that are used those are still on the market and those are still efficacious in situations where you really don't have an opportunity or the availability of running, running water. Right, as something's long... better than nothing, right? But I think, yes. I think a lot of moms are going to watch this right now going, two questions, real quick. Tell me if we should then just be stopping all sorts of antibacterial soap altogether right now, number one. And number two, does it really matter what kind of soap? Do they all really work about the same? Great point. So I don't think they're really effective, so, and, and they're certainly, they tend to be maybe more expensive. So okay. I don't think the antibacterial uh, soaps are going to be available for much longer, or at least they're not going to be promoted in that way. And your best, it doesn't matter the type of soap you use. What matters is you're using w warm running water and soap. That combination seems to reduce the spread of disease and actual infection. Got it. Mom was right from the start. Okay, exactly. we're going to make another big switch of gears now because there's one other huge headline people are talking about. Current treatment for gonorrhea may soon be ineffective. Why? Well, what we've seen, Abby, over the past number of years is that gonorrhea, like many sexually transmitted diseases and many diseases in general, the organisms have begun to mutate and to change and become resistant to very effective antibacterial treatments. For example, mm -hmm. um, gonorrhea affects about 80 million people a year, and there are about 400,000 cases in 2014 in the U.S. alone. And what we found is some of the antibiotic treatment that was available and that's effective now may not be effective because these antibiotic uh, are, are they're resistant to antibiotics because these organisms tend to mutate and they've right. shown that azithromycin is an effective medication for um, gonorrhea, but that might change in the next five years. We may have to look at combination therapy. That was going to be my next question. So you're saying five years, it may soon become ineffective. So in yes. the meantime, are researchers starting to look ahead and trying to find some sort of new combination of antibiotics that obviously uh, this virus doesn't know about yet. They are, and in fact, that's a problem not only for these venereal diseases, but for infections overall. This is where we've seen these superbugs developing because organisms that have survived for, you know, literally hundreds, if not thousands of years, have survived because of their amazing ability to mutate and change genetically so that initial antibiotics that we found they've been been effective five, ten years ago are no longer very effective. Well, let me, yeah, that's, that brings up one last question. So is that then true for other STDs at this point? Well, it is. We're looking now at uh, things like, um, you know, chlamydia and syphilis, mm -hmm. which cause approximately uh, 200 million cases a year. So it's a considerable disease problem that impacts worldwide. And we're seeing the same sorts of trends in some of these other infections. Huge issues. Dr. Shafu, thanks for joining us this Pleasure. morning. I appreciate it. All right, I'll send it over to Brad.